it's just this, this is the format, I guess. You know, it's just three races, and uh, yeah, you can all, everything you do for eight innings doesn't matter <laughs> if you don't have a great ninth inning, and it's just uh, tough to see. You know, look, these aren't these championships aren't like winning like Petty and Earnhardt used to win them. But the elimination format needs to go. We've had enough of it. This format's dumb. Absolutely, get rid of this nonsense school playoff format. That should never be a part of motorsports. Ever. It just shouldn't. No. Stop. Stop this nonsense. I cannot stand what the championship has become right now in NASCAR. See, I I'm a simple person. I'd like to think that I, I just I would like to have legitimacy in, in my champions where they're the best all year. Whoever has the highest points win, and that, that's just how it kind of goes. I feel like that's more rewarding than any other format that's ever existed. The NASCAR playoffs have been around for over 15 years now, and throughout the 15 plus year history of it, there's been many different versions of it. 2004 saw 10 drivers battle it out for 10 straight weeks, and whoever had the most points after the last 10 races was the champion. Then in 2007, the playoff field was suspended to 12 drivers. 2011 saw wildcard qualifiers and then the most recent version of the playoffs which many people call it the knockout style format where you got winning your end eliminations and one race determines the champion and oh yeah don't forget to mention that the playoff field has been expanded to 16 drivers now many nascar fans debate which format is better between these but what if i tell you that nobody asked for the playoffs to begin with and criticism towards it was being ignored let's take a deeper dive into this In 2003, there were plenty of things that were coming to an end. 76 Racing Fuel will be replaced with Sunoco Racing Fuel. Pontiac was on his way out to sport. Winston was no longer going to be the title sponsor for the Cup Series. And the biggest one was the season-long point system was no longer going to exist after 2003. A NASCAR playoff system was not even a thought throughout 2003. As a matter of fact, you didn't start hearing talks about it until very, very late in the season. I'm talking about November. What might have triggered it? Well, at one point during the season, Matt Kenseth had well over a 300 point lead. And it's not like he was out there winning a bunch of races. He was killing the field by being super consistent, always finding himself in the top 10 when the checker flag flew. What Matt Kenseth lacked was race wins. His only win that season came at Las Vegas, which was the third race of the season. Matt Kenseth locked up the championship was still a race to go in the 2003 season. But what made this a little unique was that Matt Kenseth scored only one win on his way to the title. Under this points format, which was around since 1975, there's never been a champion that won one race in a season. Everyone from drivers, team owners, track owners, journalists, and fans gave their opinion on the possibility of a playoff system being a thing in NASCAR. Most of everyone agreed that it has no place in the sport. Some people thought it was a joke when they heard about NASCAR implementing a playoff system. On a TV show called Inside Winston Cup, Jimmy Spencer said he was talking to the new CEO, Brian France, and was told that they were looking at having a playoff system in place starting in 2004. Nobody took what Spencer said seriously, but it was quickly reported that a playoff system was seriously being discussed. This is when people started giving their opinion. Everyone has a voice, but the voices that deserve to be heard the most is the fans. Without the fans, you have nothing. There was fan polls that asked, should NASCAR implement a playoff style point system? On one website named thatsracing.com, 4,600 people voted. Over 85% said no. NASCAR.com and JSC.com also have fan polls, also showing that fans aren't in favor of a playoff format. With social media not being around during this time period, websites like NASCAR.com was getting a lot more traffic back then, which means it was a good gauge to see how most fans felt about something in NASCAR. You had many NASCAR fans complaining on the NASCAR.com message boards. One fan wrote, Old oh, NASCAR, you forgot the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And it's kind of funny reading that quote because look how many things NASCAR has changed since then that didn't need to be changed. But anyway, yeah, that saying is true. Not only do fans felt that way, but also people in the sport. Most of the drivers, no matter if they were 20 years into their career or newcomers, shared the same opinion. Dale Jarrett gave his opinion on the playoff rumor, and I quote, You can call me a traditionalist or whatever, but I'm not for the change. Say we had a pretty decent 25 races and I'm seven in the points going into Richmond. 
but from 5th to 12th is really close, within 100 points of each other. On the first lap, I get taken out at Richmond and my car is torn up beyond repair. And I go all the way back to 11th or 12th. You're going to tell UPS who spends millions of dollars that the best their car can finish this season is 11th? The sport's most popular driver, Dylan Hart Jr., gives his opinion. And I quote, I like the point system we have. It rewards the driver with the best average finish. I just don't really like the idea of a 10 race shootout. Kevin Harvick thoughts. In my opinion, the point system rewards the most consistent driver in 36 races. For the most part, I think our points races have been pretty good. Matt Kenzer thoughts. I don't like the idea at all because in the last 10 races, there are no Daytonas, there are no Bristols, there are no Poconos, and there are no road courses. I don't think a champion should be rewarded with how good they are at a mile and a half racetrack. I think it should have to be rewarded on how good you are at all the tracks like it's always been. One of the oldest drivers in the field, Terry Labonte, offered his thoughts. It's a real slap in the face to the guys running 11th through 15th and their sponsors to say, okay, you can't even compete to be in the top 10. Tony Stewart was also in favor of keeping the season long point system. Jeff Gordon, who bought NASCAR into the mainstream, actually laughed at the idea. On a NASCAR boat trip with Brian France and Mike Helton, he was told about the playoff idea, and Gordon laughed right in front of Brian France's face. The fact that a four-time champion and one of the biggest names in the sport laughed at the idea of a playoff system in NASCAR should have told Brian France right there that maybe this ain't the greatest idea. Another veteran driver named Rusty Wallace wasn't in favor of the playoff system as well. But looking ahead to the championship here in 2004, a new way to decide who's going to hold the Nextel Cup. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm not real big on it. I'm not going to complain about it, but it's not, it's not what I would have done. I mean, I just, uh, to, to go to a playoff style format where you go with, uh, and everything's on the line, and only 10 guys get to compete at the end of the year, you know, maybe if you look at it, it's, it's, it hasn't been that much different in years talking about the 400 point thing you gotta be in the top 10 or you gotta be within 400 points i got a feeling the 10th place guy has always been beyond 400 points or stuff like that right. but uh i don't know it doesn't have the right ring to it to me but hey i'll support them you know i i'm scared of what the sponsors are going to think if they're not in the top 10 with 10 to go are they going to think hey the year's over heck with it you know so you got to get them in the top 10. got to get them in the top 10 but it's not <laughs> only me i'm worried about the rest of the sport you know but there was one driver that was actually in favor of it, and that was, surprise, surprise, Michael Waltrip. The guy that thinks NASCAR can do no wrong at all. Some people may say he was biased because his driver was on his way to a championship, but Jack Roush disagreed with having a playoff in NASCAR as well, with him saying, I think the system is fine just the way it is. And another good point that Jack Roush brought up was that there was close points battles going on in the other series, the truck series and bus series. The same points format that the cup series uses once again showing that you can have close points battles under a full season points format. Another concern about the playoffs was that there was going to be tracks that wasn't going to be future in the playoffs and this rubbed track owners the wrong way. There were tracks that had two dates like Bristol and Pocono for example but wasn't going to be future in the chase. It was a big deal at the time to be one of the 10 tracks future in the playoffs because everyone assumed that ratings would skyrocket because of the playoffs and uh yeah I'll talk about how that went for NASCAR later on. So there was a lot of pushback, and if that wasn't enough, Bill French Jr., who at the time was retiring from being chairman of NASCAR, wasn't convinced that the point system needed to be changed. That's really saying something. Brian French ignored all the criticism towards the playoffs and decided that starting in 2004, a playoff format would be implemented in NASCAR. So here's the part where I give my opinion on the playoffs. First of all, the fact that Brian France ignored criticism towards the playoffs and decided to go along with it anyway should have told people right there that Brian France wasn't going to be a good CEO. It's not too often where the fans, drivers, team owners, etc. all agree on something. But when it came to this, they did. Brian France basically said, forget what everyone else is saying, no matter who they are, we're going to do this anyway. Yeah, and how did that work out for NASCAR? Now, the playoffs actually was simple to understand when first implemented. I'll give NASCAR that. It wasn't hard to understand at all. Another somewhat positive about it was that NASCAR didn't completely sacrifice legitimacy. But it still wasn't fair and it became even more unfair with a big shakeup to the playoffs in 2014. There have been drivers that have put together great seasons from race 1 all the way to 36 and will come away with no title. Two drivers that come to mind immediately is Jeff Gordon and Kevin Harvick. Two drivers that should have way more titles than they have 
right now. And I already know what the playoff defenders are about to say. Well, these guys didn't step up when the playoffs arrived. And I mean, can you really say that? It's one thing if you run bad or make a mistake, but things happening that's out of your control is another. In auto racing, it's too many things that can happen that's out of your control. No matter how you feel towards a driver, you gotta agree that it's completely ridiculous to see them lose a championship when they've been the best driver all year. I know people aren't gonna wanna hear this, but I'm gonna flash back to the year 2007 where Jeff Gordon was the best driver all year. He had six wins, which was great, but more noticeable was the 30 top 10s he collected in a 36 race season. I don't know if any of you remember or notice, but Gordon had over a 300 point lead with 10 races to go and was most likely on his way to a title very easily. But with the playoffs, the points were reset and that 300 point lead was erased. And it's not like Gordon let up when the chase started. Gordon scored nine top 10s in the last 10 races and his worst finish was 11th. Now, did Gordon get outperformed in the chase? Yes, Jimmy Johnson went into beast mode and scored four straight wins and won the title. Johnson got the best of Gordon in the last 10 races, but he wasn't the best throughout an entire season. So I guess Gordon's body of work throughout a season doesn't matter, huh? A 7.3 average finish was the best among all drivers and it doesn't get you a title? That doesn't sound right. This type of situation has occurred many more times since then. And when it does, you got people out there that try to compare it to the New England Patriots when they went undefeated all season and then lost the Super Bowl. I hate that comparison and I hate when people try to compare motorsports to stick and ball sports in general. Auto racing is a totally different beast from other sports. I said earlier that things can happen that's out of your control and man, there's a laundry list of things that can happen that can cost you a title. Mechanical failures, a driver taking you out, the list goes on. In auto racing, you're going to get the same drivers all season. You're going to different racetracks. You're not racing at the same racetrack every week and it's not like you're going against one driver and other sports you're not playing against every single team in the league so in that case a playoffs in those sports makes sense to have the stick and ball comparisons just sound silly this is motorsports nascar is a motorsport and let's not pretend that the playoffs have been good for tv ratings because it hasn't nascar was on a roll in the early 2000s playoffs or no playoffs Ratings are going to continue to go up, and they did even after the playoffs were implemented. The thing to pay attention to is the ratings during the playoffs, the final 10 races. Yeah, there was an increase in TV ratings during the final 10 races in 2004, but that was totally expected. There was a new points format and people wanted to see how it was going to turn out. But look how the ratings dropped after 2004 and the drop off lasted for a while. When the back end of the season came around, less and less people were watching. And this is not me trying to make up my own narrative. This is facts. And another thing, ain't it funny that with a playoff system in place, you will think you'll see more parity when it comes to the championship? Nope. A guy named Jimmy Johnson won the championship five years in a row. That wouldn't have happened under the season long point system. 2006 and 2009 would have been the years he would be champion without the playoffs. Now, I know what a lot of you are about to say. They would have raced differently. I will have to imagine that strategy would have been different, but a driver given their 100% all would be no different. I would like to think that no matter what point system that NASCAR has in place, a driver is given their 100% all. Tweets were made to the playoffs between the years of 2004 to 2013, but an overhaul happened in 2014 and it completely eliminated legitimacy. The system is a joke. The fact that you can win 35 of the 36 races and still lose the championship is just laughable. It's gotten to a point to where a driver's body of work throughout a season doesn't even matter no more. There's so much to unpack here. There's way too many drivers that make the playoffs. Winning your end is stupid. A driver that runs between 20th to 25th just about every week and score one win and all of a sudden they find themselves in the playoffs. That driver just leapfrog a bunch of other drivers that's been running better than him or her all year. And next thing you know, those drivers find themselves on the outside looking in all because they didn't win a race. The worst thing about this format is one race determining a champion. Four drivers have a shot at the title and whoever finishes the highest out of the four is your champion. It's a complete crapshoot. Once again, there's too many things in auto racing that can happen that's out of a driver's control. We've seen drivers that find themselves in the final four that didn't belong there. 
Yet, these guys find themselves with a chance to win the title after having an average season. One late race caution could change everything. After that, chaos happens. It's like what Denny Hemmer said in 2015. I just can't get over what this series has come to. Just how f***ed up it is. How do you really crown a real champion now? Just the wild, wild west. Now listen, I know the playoffs aren't going anywhere anytime soon. The only way I see that happening is if all the higher ups in NASCAR were replaced. It's not going to just take getting rid of one guy. Brian France has been gone from NASCAR since 2018 and the playoffs still exist. With guys like Steve O'Donnell and Scott Miller in charge, nothing's not going to change anytime soon. And yes, I know those quotes that I read off earlier are from the year 2003 and obviously people's opinions change. I get it. I bet if you was to ask Dale Jr. to give his opinion about the playoffs today, he'll probably say he likes it. But like I said, if it's a big pushback towards something, it shouldn't happen. I'm not sitting here saying that the playoffs completely destroyed NASCAR. I'm not sitting here saying that at all. There's multiple things that you can look at that explains NASCAR's downfall. But the playoffs is up there as of why NASCAR has fallen over the years. I want the championship in NASCAR to be valued again. NASCAR doesn't need to reinvent the wheel once again. Look back at what you used to have in place. There's two solutions. If NASCAR so badly wants to keep a playoff system in place, just go back to the 2004 format. It was a good balance between entertainment and legitimacy. But the other solution I strongly suggest is going back to a season long championship format. The only change that should be made is award more points to the winner of a race so that way wins matter more. This is a system that should be in place, and this is a hill that I'm willing to die on. NASCAR got away from a system that worked for 30 years. Let's give it another shot. Now, as of late, NASCAR has not been afraid of making some big changes and surprising changes. Maybe one day in the future, one of those changes will be reverting back to the season-long point system. Until then, we'll just have to wait and see about that.